This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Look at the portfolio of his forgiveness and see how much he's forgiven you. You couldn't afford to do what he did. And he went to hell. Your hell. The hell we were supposed to go to. And he forgave you. I, I got to love him. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere with our state-of-the-art, custom-designed app. The new Creflo Dollar Ministries app gives you unlimited access to numerous features. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages and more. The app puts you right in the sanctuary with live streaming of services. To get connected via the new Creflo Dollar Ministries app, visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. Anybody that's ever tasted it and experience the love of God can't come out the same. You're not going around trying to look and see how much foolishness you can do? Well, you know, God's love is deep, so I might well go and knock off, go and, go and do this and go and do that and go and do that. That ain't how that works. You, or you've not really experienced the love of God. When you experience the deep love of God, you experience God doing something for you that you didn't think could be done. And when you experience that deep love, that's why I want you to experience. When you experience that deep love, see, we've been captivated by, let's keep the rules, let's do that, let's do this, let's do that, let's do that. And sometimes we're doing all the mechanics of Christianity without even knowing God. No, you, you, you don't understand God's method of transformation. You think all of the rules will transform you. And we have to work so, we work so hard to be good because we think our goodness will deserve God's goodness. How many of you, be honest, before you got saved, can recall some goodness that came from God? Mm -hmm. You was high driving, could have had a wreck to kill you, and the goodness of the Lord sent some angels to come down there and rescue you, and you didn't have no God on your side. You didn't have no God on your side. And he showed up anyway with his goodness and a little change happened. Because you can't forget that. And every time you think about it or hear God or go to church with your grandmama on Easter, you think about that time. See, God's just been planting seeds of goodness because one day you're going to be captured in his love. Hallelujah. And the things you used to do, you're not going to want to do it no more. But your good works and your rule keeping has never done that. In fact, you've done, good, you've, you've done some good works, and when you didn't get congratulated for it, you got offended. Because people didn't brag on your good works. Remember when we used to have fried chicken sales in the basement of the church? Chicken sandwich for $2.35. Glass of Kool-Aid for a dime. Freezing cup for a nickel for the children. And you worked all Saturday and came to church just to hear somebody brag on how awesome you are. I know it's true because I remember my grandmama getting mad. <laughs> no, that's not how that works. Tonight, today, I'm trying to convince you. <sighs> His love will change your behavior. His mercy will cause you to repent. Are, are, are you listening to what I'm saying? Look at something here. Matthew 22, 37 and 40. Look at this. This is something. 
Hallelujah. All these years it took us, you know, what we're doing, we're just fine-tuning some stuff because God getting ready to show out through you. You're going to meet somebody just like what you used to be like. And you're going to sound like a prophet in their presence. And you're not really prophesying. You're just telling them, no, I know this because I've seen this movie and I know how it ends. Look at this now. It, verse 37, Jesus said unto them, unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Look at verse 40. And, and verse 40 says, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, that scripture came from Deuteronomy 6 and 5. Go there. He's just repeating what was a part of the Old Testament. He said, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Okay, let's just pause just for a moment. I, I would set you up and say, how many of you love God like that? And you raise your hand, then I call you a liar, and then, you know, you get my point. I'm not going to do that. You can't, nobody can love God like that. You can't. The only person that could love God like that is Jesus. That's why the Bible says Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law because there were some things we could not fulfill. This is one of them. You're not thinking about what he's asking for. Love the Lord with all your heart. You're not loving God with all your heart. In your heart, you have love for everybody else. When you're loving God with all your heart, that's it. With all your mind? No, you're not. The stuff that goes through your mind on a daily basis, it's not building a nest in your hair, but boy, they sure going through. With all your strength, with all your finances, not even David, a man after God's own heart, could love like that. I mean, you deceive yourself and religiously try to talk yourself into saying, oh, yes, I do. No, you don't. No, you don't. I can get somebody to, uh, what's that thing, prank you outside, and they have to edit it afterwards because all the cussing you did. <laughs> you don't love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. I know you think you do. You don't. Nobody can do that except Jesus. Jesus was the only one that could, could do that. I used to think you, that could be done, but that's, that's, I mean, this is like real. This is not no, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind while you're at church. <laughs> that's why the New Testament is all about God's love for you and not your love for him. The New Testament is about God's love for you and not your love for him. Read the New Testament in context. All it's talking about is God, and I'm talking about the, well, I don't want to get into that. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I'm talking about the New Testament that started until Jesus died and uh, rose from the dead, and then the New Testament started at that point because a testator with the testament that he leaves can't come to pass until he dies. And then, you know, one, but Jesus died and he was rose from the dead. You, you see, that's a whole series, series right there. The New Testament is talking about God's love for you. First John, I believe, 4, 19 says, we love God because he first loved you. You really think you have the ability to love God without his intervention? Romans 5 and 5 says the Holy Spirit, the first work of the Holy Spirit was not you j jiggling, jerking, and falling out. The first work of the Holy Spirit is pouring his love on the inside of you. How you talking about you got the Holy Spirit and ain't got no love in you? Watch carefully, watch carefully. Romans 8, 38 and 39. I'm going somewhere with this. Stay on track with me. Stay on track with me. See, I want to make sure when you come to church, you eat, you understand, and you go live it. I can't holler scream, then you holler scream back at me, and then I holler scream back at you, and you holler scream back at me, and then when church over with, don't nobody know nothing. I don't even know what I holler and scream. <laughs> All right, are you there? So powerful. Watch this. For I am persuaded. 
Gosh, I am persuaded that neither death, life, angels, demons, principalities and powers, the things that are present, the things that are to come, nor height, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's not nothing to be able to separate me from loving God, because a lot of things have already separated us from loving God. What he's talking about is there's nothing in existence that will ever separate God's love from you. Think of that. There is nothing that can stop God's love for you. You know what? Probably only one thing, unbelief. You're not believing it. But nothing else, nothing you do, nothing you've done, nothing that happened, nothing that's going on in the world, the pandemic, the government, the mandates, the jobs, none of that is going to stop the extension of God's love towards you. He's always going to be moving stuff around to get his love to you. Oh, glory to God. Some of y'all sitting in a, in a rough situation right now, and I want to tell you God's love is on the way. Ain't nothing that can prevent his love where you're concerned. You might not have a job right now, but he's working on it right now. He's working on it right now, getting ready to give you something you've been praying for better than what you had. He's working on it right now. He's working on you right now. He's working on situations right now. He's working on your children right now. He's working on the stuff that hurt you, the stuff that used to hurt you. Ain't nothing going to ever be greater than his love towards you. That's powerful. That's powerful. His love will separate you from sin, but your sin will not separate you from his love. His love will separate you from sin. Yeah. His love will separate you from sin. God, God loves you so much, he's like, I can't. I don't want you to continue to, to sin because sin has consequences. And if you keep doing this, this is going to kill you. This is going to mess stuff up. This is, so he, his love, he loves you so much, he's working on snatching the desire for that sin away so, so it won't, won't kill you. So his love has the power to separate you from sin but your sin doesn't have the power to separate him from, separate you from his love. And, and, and we thought it did. We thought, we, we've heard it preach that your wickedness has separated you from God's love. Well, if that's the case, the people who were wicked in Nineveh, and there was God's mercy and love right there for those wicked people. Luke 17, 39. Now, this is going to get it, 39 through 47. Watch Jesus here. Watch him. Luke chapter 7, verse 39 through 47. Luke, there you go, 39, verse 39. All right, now watch this. Now, when the Pharisees, which had invited or bidden him, saw it, and what they were seeing was um, <clears throat> this woman washing his feet with her tears and using her hair to dry his feet, ministering to him. So when they saw it, he spake in himself, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, the Pharisee did, he was saying this to himself. He don't know Jesus could read thoughts. If, 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 if he were a prophet, he would have known who and what manner of woman 
this is that touches him. That's what we got in the church today. You, 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 look at what you're looking at. You're holding her hostage to what she used to do and who she used to be. But you're going to find the love has changed her. He would have known who it was that touched him, for she is a sinner. Let me, let me give you all some news here. And the Pharisees, they were too. <laughs> Next verse. And Jesus answering and said unto him, Simon, see, he's answering. He said it in himself, and Jesus was answering him. That's so awesome. You sitting up thinking something, and Jesus answered you. He said unto him, Simon, I, I, have, I, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And, and he said, Master, say on. <laughs> say that. And he said, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence, the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, See thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has watched my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. He compares Simon to the guy that had five pence, or to the, to, to the other guy, this woman, who was compared to 500 pence. He said, wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. You ain't even got to finish this. What was Jesus saying? I forgave her of much. She going to love much. Now, he, that's what he said. He says, which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. So here's what God is saying to us. I came and got on the cross was whipped with a cat of nine tails, went to hell for three days and three nights after not ever sinning. And I forgave all of mankind, everybody that ever went through the planet. I bought their forgiveness. I forgave you of much. Here's this plan. The day you realize how much you have been forgiven of, you're going to love much. One of the reasons why Christians don't love much is they simply don't know how much God has forgiven us. You don't know how much he's forgiven you. If you knew how much he's forgiven you, he has, oh, think, look at your life. Look at everything. He's already, he has forgiven you. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Listen to this. This is the best way I can put it. He's forgiven you of your past, your present, and your future sins. What? Oh, yeah. He has forgiven you of everything you've done in your past. And some people say, yes, amen. He's forgiven you of everything you of, uh, in your present. Yes, amen. He's forgiven you of your future. Whoa, 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 When Jesus was on the cross dying, he died for your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. If that were not the case, he would have to keep dying today. But he died once 
for all times. It has been taken care of. The day you recognize that is the day you love it. And every day you recognize what he's done and forgiven you of, you're going to love him more. And you're going to love him more. And you're going to love him more. And the day you thought you were certainly condemned and you saw the light of his glory rise up in your life after what you did, you're going to love him more. And the day when you had the wreck and you could have died and you should have died and you would have died, but you didn't die, then you're going to love him more. And the day when the doctor pronounced that you were going to die of the cancer or die of, of the high blood pressure or die of whatever it was, and you didn't, you're going to love him more. The day when the baby needed a pair of shoes, and look, he had a light bill due, and you even had a gas bill too, and your telephone was disconnect. You wait till your next paycheck, but it didn't come in because of COVID. And all of this stuff happened. You're going to love him more because he showed up and he made a way where there was no way and he called somebody to encounter your life and to bless you and to do what you didn't deserve and you didn't work for. How do you take credit for a stranger that showed up because God sent him to meet a need in your life? Somebody said he doesn't do that. Well, you better think again because when the apostle Paul was blind, God called somebody that was an enemy at one time to lay hands on him so he could get his eyes restored. Honey, God knows exactly what to do to cause you to want to love him more than you love him right now. But I'm trying to tell you, go ahead and look at the portfolio of his forgiveness and see how much he's forgiven you. You couldn't afford to do what he did. And he went to hell. Your hell the hell we were supposed to go to. And he forgave you. I, I got to love him. I, I, I got to praise him. I, I, I got to stay with him. I, 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 got, I got my staying power because I, I can't believe a man would die for me before I was even formed into a fetus. We don't get it. We're only asking God to forgive us of the rule breaking while we was alive. And you don't understand it wasn't you being alive and all the stuff you did. It's the fact that you should be in hell, but you're not. Why? Because of him. Because of him. It's time for you to abandon yourself in his love. Hebrews 10 and 1 and 2 talks about as long as they bought those sacrifices, they were never cleansed and they were always guilty. But when Jesus shed his blood, they were able to be cleansed and they were able to worship him, worship him without guilt and without condemnation. You know what you're saying there? Hebrews 10, 1 and 2, read it when you get home. He was saying they finally believed in what the blood of Jesus accomplished. Now they can worship him in the beauty of his holiness. It's hard to worship God when you're still feeling guilty and condemned and shameful. And there are a lot of people that have stopped coming to church because most of the shame came through the pulpit. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. God don't like ugly. Oh, he gonna get you. God's gonna get you. God's gonna get you. God's gonna get you. How many of you know if God wanted to get you, you'd have been God? Are you doing things to try to feel God's love? In his series, How to Experience the Love of God, Creflo Dollar reveals that we don't have to jump through hoops to feel God's love, only believe. You gotta believe God loves you when it doesn't look good. When you believe the love of God, you say, I believe God's love for me. That's why I know I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be delivered. This is going to be fine. This is going to work out. And God wants to hear that rehearsed and coming out of our mouth. I believe that God loves me. Quit 
believing God for little. God is a big God, and he's ready to do some big, extraordinary things in your life, but he's waiting for you to believe. That's how big his love is. Go to creflodollarministries.org and click eStore, or call the number on your screen to claim your copy of all three of these life-changing messages for a love gift of only 20 U.S. dollars or more, plus shipping and handling. Walk in God's love today. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Where do you find yourself when you now live by the faith of what Jesus has done? You find yourself in, watch this, rest. When Jesus came, the striving was to end. He says, enter into my ease. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. World Changers Church International. Easter is near, and we can't wait to experience the presence of God together as we thank Him for the ultimate sacrifice. For you to think that your behavior is greater than what the blood of Jesus did, you really think that your unrighteous behavior is strong enough to undo what he sealed in his blood? Join us for our Easter celebration on Sunday, April 17th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, no matter where you are. Tune in through the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app, mobile app, YouTube, or Facebook. Or if you're in the Atlanta area, join us in person. There are things that God is hovering on in our lives, and he wants us to invite him, to involve him, to allow him to interfere in our everyday affairs. Gather your family and set your reminder. We can't wait to worship with you. We have one mission, to tell the world that our God is alive. Because all that we are is because of who Jesus is. Not just because he died, but because he lives. Because he cares because he loves, and because he is God. So who are we? We are his hands, his feet, his people. We are his church. So we take his message of grace all around the world to the fatherless, to the hungry, to the hurting, to the old, and to the young we go. As he is, so are we. We are world changers. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.